Your component 2 exam is made up of three separate sections. Section A looks at the water and carbon cycles. Section B is your global governance work. And then section C is 21st century challenges. And you can see there that this is one single 30 mark essay. And it's a little bit different to the other parts of the examinations because um, it's an unseen element in terms of it's not necessarily something you can revise and prepare for separately. The idea behind this presentation today is just to inform you about what's involved in the paper and then also have a look at one example uh, which we're going to get you to have a go at doing. This paper, or this section of the paper, is what we call a synoptic assessment. In, in that respect, what it does is it draws on elements from across the entire course um, and it starts to really think about what the big overarching principles are that flow through the geography course. It makes lots of links between different topics and theories, processes and different ideas. It allows you to really bring to the forefront a lot of those case studies that you've learned. It looks into decision making and thinks about the complexities of different issues and that actually these issues tend to have a real sort of um, breadth across the entire geographical course. So when we're talking about the carbon cycle, it's not always just a scientific issue. It's one that draws upon both human and physical geography and all different aspects of that. Within the essay, you'll be expected to use as many key concepts as you can. So make sure you're really bringing in and really showing off your knowledge and all the hard work that you've done to prepare for your final exams. The essay is marked in this way. There's eight marks for AO1, knowledge and understanding. 12 marks for your AO2, so application to make sure you're really answering that question. And 10 marks for AO3. This is where you're going to be interpreting the figures and using evidence to support your answers. And this will become a lot clearer as you look at a particular example. And it's really important to remember that aspect of this exam, that that AO3 is so heavily weighted. It's really important that you're drawing out as much information as possible from the different figures that you're presented with. In terms of planning your essay, again, like with the other essays in the other components, you need to make sure you've got a really clear introduction, make sure you're deconstructing those key terms and establishing what your discussion and your arguments are going to be. Your paragraphs need to be constructed almost in a way that's for or against um, the question that you've been posed with. So is it supporting your argument or is it going against your argument? Use each figure really carefully and make sure you include as many case studies alongside your points as you're moving along. And then your conclusion needs to be a, a final sort of evaluation. And also it could even start to think about suggestions um, for the future as well. So any other issues um, that might be drawn into this. Now we're going to have a look at an example today from a Sam's paper which you all should have access to on Show My Homework. The two questions we can choose from, so again, one of the good things about doing the Educast course is that you do get a choice of different questions, are on the right hand side. So in this paper, the two questions you can answer are, to what extent could the management of different risks lead to changes in the characteristics of urban places? And the next question is, Assess the severity of the different risks that cities increasingly face. You only need to do one of these questions. Today, we're going to be looking at that second question, which looks at the severity of different risks. On the left hand side here are just a series of questions that we're going to use to help us consider and think about the different figures um, that we're presented with. And so we'll be using these as we move through. The first thing we need to look at is think about the question in particular. So this question says, assess the severity of the different risks that cities increasingly face. Now to begin with, we can underline some of those 
command words and also some of the key terms because you're going to need to make sure you're addressing those in your introduction. We also need to think about the different parts of the course that this question might link to. And at the bottom there, I've put lots of the different parts of the course. And I just want you maybe to pause this video now and spend five minutes just annotating the question, thinking about how it might link to those different areas of the course. Now, when we start to take this question apart, first of all, assess the severity. So in this question, you're going to need to evaluate how severe it is. Is it low? Is it high? What's the scale of that risk? Is it a global scale or is it just local? Is it regional? Make sure you're bringing that into your answer. And also, is that scale or is that severity changing over time? Different risks. So what do we mean by this term risk? Now, we've talked about that a lot, especially in natural hazards. You'd have looked at the disaster risk equation. And in that um, respect, it's going to be really important. You're thinking about the vulnerabilities of different populations. And that risk is you can have the same hazard, but obviously different populations will be affected by it in different ways based on how vulnerable they are. And then on the right hand side here, what do we mean by cities increasingly facing risk? Well, I put here what are the major issues around the world? And these are maybe some of the ideas that you came up before when you were thinking about um, different parts of the course that this might link to climate change, sea level rise, terrorism, different natural hazards, population increase, migration, food and energy security or insecurity, the provision of housing, gentrification, pandemics. Straight away there, we've I've talked about so many different parts of the course that you will have covered and you'll be able to bring all those different ideas into your essay. So what you'll be presented with when you open your exam paper for this section is either three or four different figures. And you can, we think it's a good idea to spend a little bit of time analysing each of these. Now, obviously, in the exam, you're going to have to operate quite quickly. Today, we've got obviously a lot more time to be able to look at it. So what I'd like you to do is for each of these, I'd like you to have a look at them and try and go through these different bullet points and think about what does each figure show me? Is it for or against the question? Does it prove or disprove something? Can I describe and explain each figure? Can I link the source to a case study or example I have studied? And are there any key terms or concepts that I can include, I can include in my essay here? So let's have a look at this one together. What does each figure show me? Well, this has shown me major cities and the earthquake risk. You can see there you've got a colour code at the bottom from red very high to the yellow which is very low and then you've got the size of the cities and these are estimated 2010 populations so this is obviously a little bit out of date and the world map there shows us how these are all distributed around the world so if I read the question again assess the severity of the different risks that cities increasingly face what does this figure show me well it shows me that lots of cities are in areas where there are high seismic risks but it also shows me there are cities that are quite large that are in areas of quite low seismic risk is it for or against the argument so is it telling me that the cities are facing increased level of severity well yeah it is isn't it because we've got all these big mega cities that are constantly growing that are in areas that have got high hazard risk and we can certainly pick out some areas where we know those cities are increasing very rapidly does it prove or disprove something well, not any more than we've already said, does it? You know, I think we've said there that it shows us that some places are at greater risk and some are less so. So we can use it in both ways to argue for and against the question. Can I describe and explain each of the figures? Again, that's going to be your AO3 element to make sure that you're picking out any trends or any patterns that you can see. Linking the case study to any, um, linking the source to any case studies that you've studied, well here you can bring in any examples of hazard studies that you've used. And within that, you might start thinking about this idea of risk and vulnerability. So actually, on that graph here, we can see these different places that are being affected or could be affected from very high seismic hazards, but we know that the risk is different in different places. So for example, Tokyo, you've got a very large population in an area of very high risk, 
However, we know that those hazards, that seismic risk, might be quite low because of the technologies they have. Whereas other areas, for example, Tehran, um, is an area which is a low income country and therefore the risk might be higher. So you're starting to evaluate this and saying, based on this question here, well, yes, there are lots of cities that are in areas of high tectonic risk, but obviously there are other factors that affect what that risk is like. And that's where you can start bringing in your knowledge and bringing in discussion about that. You might also start bringing in different ideas around other areas of the course. So it could be the case that, well, I've got a very high population density, but that, I'm um, sorry, very high population, but that population might not be very densely um, compact within an area. It could be spread out further. It could be that that seismic risk is at risk from one particular type of hazard rather than being at risk from multiple hazards. So you could be on a tectonic plate boundary where you just get earthquakes and you're not affected by tsunamis. Are there any key concepts that I can include in my essay here? I would be really looking at thinking about a disaster risk equation and how you could incorporate that into your essay. So what you would do here is you'd write a paragraph where you're trying to address that question, saying that, what does this show me? I need to describe the patterns, but also bring an outside geography into that to try and use it to help me either argue for or against the question. So it is here, are we seeing an increase in severity or are we seeing a decrease in severity? Or are you saying that it's mainly balanced? The next one I'm going to leave you to have a look at, this is looking at the different levels of um, its tsunami zones around the world. Sometimes you might want to incorporate maps and cross them over. So figure five and six might actually be able to be used in conjunction. This figure looks at annual average losses in sea level rise, and it highlights some key cities around the world that are going to experience an increase. Um, is it for or against the question? Well, you could argue that it is. It's saying that the severity of risk is going to increase as sea level rises. Does it prove or disprove something? Well, again, I think it's really telling us that, that severity is increasing in some parts of the world. Describe the figure. I've already sort of done that for you. Link it to any other case studies that we studied. Well, here you're going to be thinking about maybe your carbon and water cycle work that you've looked at and thinking about reasons why um, sea levels are increasing. There's lots of geography that you can bring in here to say why this would be increasing risk. So all the different factors that can lead to um, increase in sea level rises or changes in our carbon and water cycle could be linked in there and used within that. The final one is a bit more of a human geography um, graph and this looks at terrorist attacks. So again, we're trying to think about what types of geography we could link this to um, and how we can use it to help us answer the question. So it says assess the severity of different risks that cities increasingly face. And you can see here um, cities facing increasing risk from terrorism. Now quite often, um, and we saw in the events of the night, there was obviously a terrorist attack in Vienna just last night. Um, and it was all over the news and it made us think it obviously was a really tragic event. Um, but at the same time, about two or three days ago, there was a shooting in a, um, at a university in Afghanistan that killed about 30 people, but yet it didn't make the news. And so sometimes terrorist attacks are disproportionately represented in the news. Um, I think that's important to think about because if you look at where the main terrorist attacks are, they're not necessarily in Europe or in North America. They're actually in Central Africa and across, across Asia. Now, what does this tell us about terrorist attacks or what does it tell us about increases in cities? Well, definitely it's something that's been in the news. It's something that is increasing. Um, certainly something that's been publicised to increase more. Can you link it to any case studies you've looked at? Think about your global governance work. Think about the migration and how people are moving. Think about conflicts over different resources. It could be the case you might link it to climate change and force migration. It could be this idea of depletion of resources uh, and the fact that we obviously we've got less in the world with more people living in there. So lots of key concepts that you can think about to try and help you answer that question. So what you then try and do is obviously using this, you're going to try and construct your paragraphs and have a go 
at answering the question.